Hi guys, so in this video I'm going to show how I made this Warhammer 40k bunker. And as you all know I like orcs so much so this is going to be an orc bunker. So here's just a few teaser shots of what I built. To see it in all its glory stay to the end of the video. So this video is a little bit different from my normal ones as this one is a challenge video. So on one of my previous videos I had a comment saying that myself and Scratch Bashin should do a collaboration. So I sent Scratch Bashin an email to see if he'd be up for doing some sort of challenge. He replied yes and here we are. So the challenge we set ourselves was to make a bunker which we could make however we wanted and with wherever we wanted. So to start with it's a case of getting all your bits and pieces together and seeing what you've got and what you can make from it. So I'm starting to get more and more in my bits box although not nearly as much as I'd like as I know Scratch Bashin is a pro at taking bits apart and keeping lots of bits. So there's quite a few odds and ends here. Probably won't use all of these, but it's a good idea to get lots of bits together just to start getting some ideas in my head. So this can probably will be in the build, because I just love the look of the texture on it. So I'm using these craft foam sheets for the very first time, as I've seen lots of other builders use these, as they're relatively inexpensive, cut well, and you can make great shapes with them. So for the overall shape and look of the bunker, I'm kind of going with your typical World War II style thing. With the exception of a tin can shoved on the side. So the good thing about this being an orc bunker, sometimes it doesn't have to make sense. You can just put random bits here and there, and that's the kind of thing the orcs would do. So I'm using this little orc fella just to get the rough sizes. As you can see it's kind of unpainted because I started it just before I packed everything up in boxes. So once I move into my new place I'm going to continue painting him and all his friends. So as I say this stuff is nice and easy to cut which is really good. So that's all the side panels cut out. Now I just need to cut out the slots so the guys inside can shoot out. Just so I cut the right bits out, I'll scribble on the bits that I need to throw away. As I like to try out new things to see what works well for me, I'm trying out this Evo stick to stick the foam sheets together. So with this stuff you need to apply it to both edges you want to stick together, then leave them for a bit, then once they make contact it will stick like, well, like glue. Well the one thing I don't like about this is it's very strong smelling, so you wouldn't want to use this too much otherwise I think you'd be high and pass out. But I'm going to stick with it at the moment just to see how it goes. So it's been left for a few minutes and the bits really do stick well to each other. So I've also used the contact adhesive to stick the can to it just to see how well it coats with different materials. And again it seems pretty good. And now I'm going to make some steps going up to the top of the can. And here I'm using the good old Lego bricks as I still have hundreds of these. As I think I've just seen a pink elephant dancing on the ceiling, I'm going to stop using the contact adhesive for a bit and go back to good old super glue. And this super glue I bought from Amazon, it's only about £4. 
and it lasts for ages. And I know it sticks anything to anything instantly. Don't forget guys, there's links down below to all the stuff that I use. I am an Amazon affiliate now, so it doesn't cost you anything. But every time you click on one of the links and then go and buy something, I get a couple of pence in return. So that's a win-win. So I'm going to raise the floor up a little bit. And I think I may have done the, uh, the window slits a bit too high for my little orc. You can barely see out of it. So I'm going to raise the floor and then put some sort of wooden planks down on top. Although obviously it's not real wooden planks, it's just coffee stirrers. So these are nice to use and again, really in inexpensive. I think I've got a bag of about 500. I can't remember the exact price, but again, it was nice and cheap and from Amazon. So I'm using PVA glue to stick these down, as obviously that's even cheaper than the super glue and there's no rush in getting these stuck down. So that's the flooring done, I think it looks pretty good. Now I'm going to carry on with the steps. So I'm just cutting up some cardboard that came from a cereal box. This I didn't get from Amazon, I think it's more like Tesco's. I'm using the super glue again for this as as well as the fact it doesn't make me want to pass out it's nice and instant and a lot easier to use than the contact adhesive I'm using some more wooden stirrers just to cover up the side here And these I'm going to cut into a spiky point, as the orcs seem to love spiky bits. And back round at the front, I'm going to use some good old sprues to make some more spiky bits. So I'm cutting the sprues into roughly equal lengths and then trimming the top to make a point. And these are just glued into place along the wall. So I'm going to make a roof for this and the easiest way to do that is to make a little template first which I'm going to do out of paper as this is nice and easy to cut and I can bend it and form it into the shape that I need. And there we go, now it's the shape I need, I can just transfer that onto the foam sheets and then cut the foam sheet out. And 
and it's almost a perfect fit. Again, the great thing about Orc builds is it doesn't have to be a perfect fit. If anything, the less perfect, the better. So I cut out another piece of the foam, just so the roof is thicker now. As I want to cut the roof, so it's got a little bit of a slope going all the way around it. So I'll definitely be using the foam sheets for more builds, as it really is easy to use and great to cut. Sorry the camera keeps shaking guys, but I'm currently working on a kitchen table and the camera's kind of attached to the table. So every time I do something, sometimes the camera shakes. I will soon be in my new place, get things set up and be much more professional. And there you go, it's taking shape and starts to look more like a bunker. So I put this little framework inside on top of the roof, just so when it gets slotted back on top, it doesn't move or come off then. So I've got some thinner foam sheets, which I'm going to use just to make a little border around the windows. As these window border bits are, are eventually going to be painted metal, I've got these little diamonds that I'm going to use just so they look like rivets. And they just get glued into place. And I've got these little toy sandbags, which I'm not too sure where they came from. But they look pretty good when they're painted, so they're just going to go on the outside here. So I've nabbed this orc face from a previous build I had. And I'm going to use it on this build instead. So I've got two more of these sandbags that are bigger than the previous ones. Again, I'm not too sure where they came from. It may have been a Lego set, or it may have been a Mega Construct set. I'm really not too sure. But the only problem is I've only got the two of them. So I'm going to cut these two and cut off the studs on top, filling in the little holes and then I'm going to make moulds of these and then cast more. So I start by building a framework for the piece that I want to make the mould of and again using Lego is quite an easy way to do this as you can make it whatever size and shape and height you need. So again I'm trying out something new in this video so this is a different silicon rubber to the one I normally use. This one's cheaper than the last one and again can be found on Amazon. So the main difference with this one is the mix ratio, whereas normally the ones I get are a 1 to 1, maybe a 2 to 1, but this one's a 100 to 5, so I may well need a calculator to work out this one. So using the scales I can measure out the parts. So I definitely use the calculator to work out what it was, and then once the two parts are in together it's just a case of thoroughly mixing them until it's one consistent colour. And then once that's ready you pour it into the mould from a nice height to try and get a thin stream as this reduces any bubbles that might get trapped inside the mould. And then giving it a little shake to try and help any air bubbles release to the top. And when they do give them a little poke. So while that's setting I'm just going through a smaller bits box I've got to see if there's anything else I can use to add on to this bunker. So a lot of the stuff in this little tray are more from Lego than anything else but they're the right kind of size that would fit in well with Warhammer. So I think these bits would work well for the door that goes at the back of the bunker. And these tyre treads will go well for the bottom of the tin. So the thing I really like about these kind of builds is you just sort of make it up as you go along. Finding bits that you think might fit, and if you find a bit that doesn't fit, well then you keep that for something else. So for the top of the bunker, which could work well as a lookout, I'm going to build a kind of a broken wall around the top. So again, just using cut up bits of the foam and my trusty super glue.
as I'm trying to use all the skills that I've learned throughout the last few videos, I'm also going to burn some things. Just as that seemed like lots of fun the last time. So I'm just going to slightly burn the tops of these walls, just to make it look a bit more irregular and a bit more broken. Plus I also wanted to see how well this stuff burns. So I like the effect it's giving as it is making the walls look a bit more derelict and irregular and not like it's just been cut. So I'm going to place some thin wire into the walls just so it looks like part of the reinforced wire that would be in, well, concrete walls really. And the easiest way to get the wire into the walls is to heat up the tip first and then when you push it into the foam it just sort of melts and goes straight in. Simples. Plus this way you also don't need to use any glue as once the wire and the foam cool down it makes a nice secure bond. And I'm just going to repeat that process all the way around the wall. And I'm also going to have some of the wire going the other way and this I'm just going to simply glue into place. And there we go, I think that looks pretty effective for a broken wall. So it's been about eight hours since I made the mould and now it's ready to take out this little Lego casing. So it comes out nice and easy, just need to cut a few bits and then clean off all the plasticine that's remaining. As I'm doing lots of new things in this video, I'm also going to use a different casting resin, but thankfully this one's nice and easy and it's mixed on a ratio of 1 to 1. I still like using the scales though, just to equally measure it out. And again, this gets a good old stir before pouring in. And this is a pretty fast curing resin, it only takes about 15-20 minutes. And then I can pop it out and see how it looks. So I'll repeat that process six more times until I've got the right amount of sandbags that I need. And then these are just glued into place. And there we go, my little orc fella's got a little look out. So I'm pleased with how it's looking, I've stuck on a few, few more little bits and pieces here and there. And it's almost ready for painting. So this is probably where Scratch Bashing is probably shouting out spackle, spackle, spackle. But as I'm British, I don't spackle, I filler. This will help fill any gaps, plus I also want to make the texture to go on the walls. So again, don't have to be too neat here. As it's meant to be a wall that's been plastered by an orc who would have literally just thrown it on and then walked away. And I'm also going to use it on the stairs just to finish them off. So I'm using it on the roof again to help fill in any gaps. And I've also put some bits on the wire. Again, just to make it look like the wall's been broken down. Some of it's fallen off, but some of it's still half attached. So I'm happy with that. Now it's off to paint it. So this time, rather than using the grey primer, again, I'm going to try something different, and I'm going to use a black primer. So I'm still watching lots of other videos on YouTubers showing how they paint things, and most of them do seem to go with a darker base. So that's what I'm trying out here. So one of the guys I follow is Midwinter Minis, as he's an awesome painter and just makes it look so easy. So I left a comment on one of his videos and he replied with this. The trick is to care less. And I think he's right. In all my previous painting jobs, before I've even started, I've kind of put myself down by saying I'm not very good, which is true. But because I think that, I then don't enjoy the painting 
which I think is why sometimes it doesn't come out too well. So this time, I am going to try less. I'm just going to have fun. And whatever happens, happens. So I'm starting by doing a bit of dry brushing with some silver paint over the old tin. As I have got a darker base, again I'm going to try something that I don't normally do. And that is I'm going to water down the paints by a lot more than I normally do. So that way when I paint them over the black, parts of the black are still showing through. So I'm kind of liking how this looks, as it almost looks like you don't need to do a wash afterwards. As it's still showing quite a lot of shadow and depth because of the black showing through. So I'm doing the same process for all the paints I'm going to use on this, this, this project. I'm going to water them down a whole lot more than I would normally. Just so the black does show through. And then in some areas if I need to, I can just give it a second or a third or even fourth coat. So I think the whole thing about caring less is certainly working well here. As for the first time I'm actually enjoying painting. Now the whole piece is painted, I'm going to go over some areas, and in this case I'm going to add some rust. So I've got a few rust washes I'm going to use in this. Again, just having some fun with it really. And in the words of Bob Ross, there are no mistakes, just happy little accidents. So I've definitely enjoyed painting this a whole lot more than any previous project, but I'm also pretty pleased with how it's come out. And there we go guys, I don't think it looks too bad. My little green fella seems to like it as well. So I think it's pretty cool that the roof can come off. Just so you can get your figures inside, put the roof back on. And I maybe even put some more figs on top. So the good thing is you can get quite a few pieces in here, what about five or six maybe, and then the roof can go on and you can get more people on top. So that's it guys, I hope you liked the build. I hope you didn't find the video too long, I just didn't want to leave any of the bits out as I was trying so many of the things that I've learned in this one video. As this is a challenge guys, don't forget to go and check out Scratch Bashing to see what he's come up with for this bunker build. There's a link in the description guys, and don't forget to let him know you've come from here. If you have enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that like button, and leave some comments below, let me know what you thought of this video, and what you might want to see me do in the future. If you are new here, don't forget to subscribe, and turn on the notification bell, just so you get informed of when my videos come out. Here's another video you can click on to see more of what I do. If you are able guys, it would be great if you could share this on Twitter, your Facebook page or Facebook group, Discord and Reddit, that would be awesome. Ok guys, that's it. Bye for now.